Thanks for everyone for uh, coming to today's authors at Google Talk. Today we have uh, Rain Wilson, uh, co-author and one of the founders of the site soulpancake.com, here to talk about his book, Soul Pancake, Chew on Life's Big Questions. We're very excited to have him, uh, and we're looking forward to a great hour. We're going to start, though, by uh, watching just a couple of videos on the site. So go ahead and roll clip. There is sound. Can we start that one more time, guys? With the with the sound. queue up the next video, there is also a reminder, it's not only in bookstores, but it's also at the back of the room, so feel free to pick up a copy uh, before or at the end of today's talk. Life's biggest questions, well, I got a good question. Why am I here? What is my purpose? What is God? Why does white milk turn to yellow butter? Will I be successful? Is all of this worth it? Why doesn't racism die? Can religion make us better people? Uh, is love all that matters? Why are girls so weird? Welcome to the stage of NBC's The Office, Rain Wilson. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. And if you, for those of you who don't know, this is actually a, a bit of a tour, enjoying that chair a little too much. You can't afford better chairs? Uh, those are the Google. better chairs. Those actually, yeah, those are the better chairs. All right. I'll make do. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, you got a chance to visit our New York office as well. I appreciate you stopping on the best coast, um, you know, the West Coast, whichever. You know, this campus kicks New York's ass. New York, don't, I mean, don't even go to New York. Don't even bother. It's like, it's in the meatpacking district. It's, it's depressing. It's boring. The, obviously, the best, brightest minds and the best looking people are here at Google. Where are we? What town is this? San Francisco. Um, uh, Silicon Mountain. Valley. The Valley. Um, this, is, uh, this is really cool. Um, you, I know a lot of you have your little camera phones working now, so I thought we'd take this time for a photo opportunity. Ready? Get your cameras out. Ready? Five, four, three, two, and here we go. Now, when you show these pictures, it's like I'm a motivational speaker. Get it? This side of the room? Good. Okay. Very nice. Thanks for having me, Google. It's a pleasure to be here. Larry and Sergey, are they here? They Larry? They'll probably show up later. They have a private box office. They're like the two grumpy old men from the Muppets. They just kind of sit and, <laughs> and judge. Very good. Well, thanks again for coming. Uh, Soul Pancake, I uh, got a chance to breeze through this a little bit, but and as well as your site, I'd love to hear uh, your synopsis of what went into uh, uh, the start of this project and, uh, and, and you know, your thoughts on how successful the site has been so far. Great. Um, well, you know, when I started getting well-known for doing The Office, um, I 
I just I realized that I had a great opportunity to do something really special and unique on the web, uh, just because of my celebrity and stuff. And I, I really thought long and hard and, and consulted about it. Um, the co-founder of of the website, Soul Pancake, is here. Devin, you want to stand up? Devin Gundry, he's here. Stand up. Stand up. Um, and my co-authors are here. I'll introduce them later. But, um, uh, you know, we just talked about, you know, things that I was passionate about. And I, I really wanted to do something unique and special on the web that, that wasn't there. Uh, uh, I think that the web has progressed a lot since we started having these conversations about four years ago. But at the time, there wasn't very much positive on the Internet. There wasn't very much that was um, uplifting or that was actively working to make the world a better place. I mean, granted, of course, there was charity websites and, and stuff like that. But um, so the thing that we came up with was looking at life's big questions. Um, because um, I didn't want it to be like, oh, I have the answers or anything like that, because I don't have the answers. But this is something that I've been passionate about. Uh, you know, I grew up in a in a kind of a crazy bohemian household, and we would have long debates about philosophy and religion and, and art and go to galleries and museum openings. And the, the, the intersection between art and philosophy and, and spiritual belief was just always very vibrant in our household. Um, it was really totally fucked up in every other way, but that was a real positive thing. Um, <laughs> That, that we had going on. And then, um, and then I got into school and continued that, that interest. And um, uh, I took great books classes through high school. They had a great books um, course in my, in my high school where we didn't write papers. We just debated um, the great authors. And you were tested on your ability to kind of like break down, you know, Les Miserables by Victor Hugo and talk about the ideas of social justice in there and you know, and really, you know, present your case. And, um, and then I moved on to college and took philosophy classes. I've also, you know, been, uh, uh, spirituality is an important part of my life and investigating the world's religions and stuff like that. And, and art has always been an important part of my life. And, and moving to New York and being kind of a crazy bohemian, you know, doing plays, downtown theaters and doing weird clown shows off, off Broadway and stuff like that. Like I, I always, um, was intrigued by all of these things and, and how they intersected. Because I think that um, uh, in our culture, um, we're very compartmentalized. We have our, you have your work life here. And then maybe outside of your work life, you have your, your social life. And maybe your friends are from college or high school um, or people that share hobbies. And then you have your, you know, your romantic life and your family life. And maybe there's a little bit of a spiritual life here, or maybe there's, you know, your your exercise here, or whatever it is that, um, there are all these different boxes. And I think that this is a, um, uh, there's a lot of great things about the modern world, but I think this is one of the difficulties in the modern world is how fractured all of that is. And um, I personally believe that it's all really one and the same thing. Um, we could talk more about that later, but see, I'm, I'm, I'm talking too much already. So why we founded it, we just wanted a, a, to build a cool place to make it cool for uh, people to uh, talk about what it is to be a human being, to continue the discussion that started really with the ancient Greeks, but it really started before them, um, just to continue that same discussion about you know, love and justice and life and the soul. And um, this is the best way we could think of to do it, was to do the website. And then as soon as we finished, you know, this, you know, our version, our current version of the website that's up there, we moved on to, you know, we're shooting uh, these webisodes for the Oprah Winfrey Network, and, um, and, we did this, and we did this book, and we really want Soul Pancake to be kind of a brand or a platform um, to kind of have a fresh, irreverent, unique way of looking at the world and what it is to be a human being. Does that make sense? It does. It does, and, and uh, the, the the structure of the site. For those of you who haven't visited, I recommend uh, I recommend it again. Soulpancake.com. The structure of the site is uh, very conversational in nature, and so there's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of banter between 
commenters. So they, you post a question, if I'm not mistaken, you post a question and people just kind of respond as they will, some long form, some short form, but then you have the ability to respond to specific comments as well. So you know, as a platform, were you trying to recreate a, um, something similar to this class or, or what were you going for when you, when you were actually thinking about the structure of Stone Pancake? I, th I think the, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, it was a lot of guesswork. Like we just wanted to get something up and, and running and we, none of us had really built a, a, a website before with any kind of traffic. So, you know, we also, besides the, we call it the question collective, we also have challenges on there that we post every day. There's content um, and a lot of it is about not just talking but doing, uh, creating art and responding with visual images and um, responding with poetry and not just saying, well, I believe that blah, 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 you know, that kind of thing. Um, but, but yeah, the, the point was to create a community of people that are just searching and um, interested in discussing something, uh, something a, little bit, a little bit deeper. Um, I found that it had just it had become so, uh, you know, it was one of the personal things. It was it was so rare to be able to find people to have a really deep conversation with, um, not a pretentious one, but just to uh, this isn't it isn't done much, you know, in our society. And I think that I think it should be, you know, I think that the uh, you know rich, soul filled conversations need to be part of our, of our daily lives. Uh, there's nothing to be scared of, you know. But the reason that we're scared is usually that those discussions are either people have an agenda, like they want to convert you to a way of thinking or a religious belief or an atheism belief or whatever, but there's an element of, like, I want to convert you to how I think. Or else it's really new agey and airy-fairy and hippy-dippy and lovey-dovey in a way that makes me want to vomit, you know. So we just wanted to find something that was in between that. And there's a share of, you know, there's new age hippies on Soul Pancake, and there's also born again Christians and, and born again atheists on Soul Pancake. Um, but, uh, you know, this is, it's, it's for everyone. And that, that's the great thing of what we've done. I would say the, the single greatest success of this version of Soul Pancake is, um, is that we um, have created something where there are, there's no other website where there's, Muslims, Buddhists, Judists, um, uh, Christians, and and atheists and agnostics, all talking civilly to each other in one place, and uh, and that's a really it's a really cool thing and a real unifying thing. Uh, Judas, for those of you who didn't catch that reference, that's Jewish Buddhists, not a uh, yes, Judas, exactly. Base. Um, you made an interesting point though that it's not uh, we we don't talk about these deep subjects as much in uh, either in current society, I have a hard time believing it was ever really done uh, that frequently, but uh, I mean, do you feel like there is something about the nature of the internet, or maybe about your site specifically, that allows people to talk about these, or do you think most people would be willing to talk about them if only these subjects came up more often? You know, I think it's a little all of the above. I think that, um, yeah, I think that I, I don't know. It's um, it's easy to just get um, it's easy to get doors shut in your face if you want to talk about them. I think, and um, um, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why that is. I don't know why that is exactly. Do you find yourself bringing up these kinds of subjects? I mean, these are fairly uh, not just thought provoking questions, but they're very like uh, blisteringly honest questions where you have, you know, you have to be true to your own beliefs to really yeah. have a good conversation about them. Do you find Yeah, I do. One? I do all the time and it clears the room <laughs> like a mofo. It's crazy. Like you you know, you bring up like um you know, you know, just the big question, do you believe in God? And people are like, "Uh oh, here it comes," you know. And you know, and then they're like, "No," or "Yes," or whatever. Really, why? What you know, how do you believe that? What do you think is going to happen when you die? Really, do you think that you just your body starts to decay. That's it. No more consciousness. That that's what happens. Yes or no or I don't know or or whatever. But you know, um, I think that uh, you know, Thoreau 
you know, I think that Soul Pancake is really inspired by the transcendentalists. And kind of one of the things I realized in writing this book is like, wow, I really kind of came back around like, oh, yeah, I used to read all those transcendentalists in high school. I was like, I really am a transcendentalist. I believe that art and spirituality and the expression of being human is transcends just our normal, like, pooping and fucking and shitting and eating lives that we all live, you know, that it that there's we're longing for something more and something deeper and you know Thoreau said the unexamined life is not worth living and it's just about examining our our lives a little bit a little bit deeper and just to to get like you know who are you who are we what what do i stand for where's my integrity what what's my legacy what is my relationship to to the earth and and to other people and and to uh, a higher being or or to nature whatever it is the the, uh, the throw quote, the unexamined life, uh, that that definitely came to mind when I was looking at this. And the the feeling that I've always gotten, uh, you know, as growing up, I've always wanted to have conversations, found it as difficult, uh, is that it's... You can talk to me, Jesse. It's really difficult. It's really difficult to examine, right? You have to be honest, and you, and you often realize there's a disconnect between what you'd like to think you believe and what you actually do. And so these these conversations get, like I said, very honest and, and sometimes depressingly so. Do you feel like uh, that your site is a effective conduit, though, for people to be honest, or are they constantly kind of putting out there what they think they'd like to believe? You know, it's it's a lot of it is, you know, we'd like to do a lot more with the site than is up there, to be really honest with you guys. I think it's a good start. Um, and, you know, we need funding, and we need a development team, and we need a lot of things to be able Wink. to do that. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, Larry, Sergey, um, <laughs> eh, but, uh, uh, I think that, yeah, I think it's a good start towards that. I think ultimately a bunch of anonymous people saying, well, I think blah, 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 is not necessarily the best way to go about it. And sometimes the site devolves into that. And we are f figuring out um, a lot of other ways that we want to really especially bring the arts into the site and creativity and have be a people be able to... Um, uh, have more artistic challenges um, and people to post videos and express themselves beyond just kind of text writing and saying, well, I think this, that, and the other thing, you know. So um, in par it's partially successful, I would say. It's a, it's a good stab at it, and I think it's really the only place on the web that is trying to do that, you know. I think, like, there's not really much to compare it to. I think that, you know, BeliefNet maybe, but... Um, you know that's that's a really fractured thing. If you're a Jew, if you're a Buddhist, you go to this page at BeliefNet, and if you're Christian, you go here, and if you're Catholic, you go here, and you know what I mean. Like that's all very fractured. Um, and we're trying to just bring people together. It's about the human experience. It's not about your little belief box. I, I really like the idea of engaging your visitors. Uh, I'd like to ask about how much response you feel like you've had to when you put out these challenges. But certainly in this book, you've um, you you challenged your readers to do things. Uh, one of the things you challenge to do often is uh, is create lists, and these pros and con lists. And this has happened over and over and over again in the book. Is Could you give me five reasons why you think lists are, go are a good idea? Or is, is there a specific reason why you've chosen that approach? It seems to be pretty common. Well, uh, lists, um, we do it a lot on the site, and we do it a lot on the book. We do, you know, list the five things that you blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, write down the three things, or the ten most important things, or something like that. And I think it's just an easy way to get the conversation going. I don't think the lists are the be-all and the end-all. I think that lists make it, it's just an easier way to just start, uh, start that conversation. And when you start that conversation, the harder way, which is create art, uh, you know, do poetry, paint a picture, something like yeah. that, do you feel like you've had a good response from your community, or has it been pretty tough oh, to get Oh, very that much so. I mean, we have, um, you guys can help me more with the content stuff. Um, uh, th that we've done, but we've had such incredible um, artistic challenges. What are some of the ones that you think that have been really good with, like, people sharing their art specifically for Soul Pancake that they've created? Mm -hmm. Like a photo challenge that uh, to capture light with a camera that reflects your soul and uh, get hundreds of responses. I mean, it's it's a really beautiful gallery when it's done. Haikus are always good. Haikus. 
haiku on what you think happens to you when you die, that kind of thing. So those kind of like artistic social interactions. Um, Haikus are particularly nice because yeah. they're so short, fairly you know, non-committal. You can get someone to write something like that. Yeah, you can dash one off, but then you start to dash it off, and then you go, oh, this is trickier than it seems, and you start to tool, retool it and retool it and strip it away and pare it down and think about it and find the right word. And, and it's interesting because it's, like it's like a little uh, Rubik's Cube. Well, yeah, but it has a, has a really great hook for engagement. So have you found uh, other ways to... to I mean, when you present something like paint a picture or do something large scale that expresses X, Y, Z, again, you're going to weed out a lot of people just because of the amount of effort. Have you found ways to almost trick people into getting to think more deeply, which I find is probably the best way to get these conversations started is don't let them know that you're getting the conversation started. Well, I think that's, and that's what, that's what the whole thing of, of Soul Pancake and what our content is, and a little bit of what we do in the book is, is exactly what you're talking about. It's like, tricking people way into ways of getting the conversation started. And I think that's what we do. I think that's what lists do. I think that's what haikus do. I think that, you know, if something is really simple, like what's the most, what's the happiest you've ever been or something like that, like that people can go, oh, that's this, it's that, it's easy. But it, it gets you putting yourself out there and, and yeah. engaging in the, in the mush. Take that into, you know, what is real happiness and, and you, all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're quoting more and... There you go. It's great people. Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, I, I find uh, I, I found a lot of the comments uh, rather fascinating on some at least the more recent conversations. I didn't go uh, tremendously far back, but do you do you or your team ever read through the comments? Do you ever comment yourself? I know it's a lot of question asking, but do you ever join that discussion or at least monitor it? Um, I, I do sometimes, um, but I you know I read the site every day, and I you know I read the you know I I get up and I check it and I read the what the challenges are and kind of look at the responses and stuff like that. I don't, I don't read every single one, but I like to see kind of where it's going and, and you know, where it needs to be going and, and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm very engaged. And I, I just think it's, it's like a dream come true. It's really cool that, you know, there's, you know, there's teenagers from Dubuque and there's college students in Namibia and there's, you know, born again Christians in, in Athens, Georgia, and they're all, you know, they're all just digging into the stuff of life and into uh, the intersection of creativity and spirituality and philosophy. Well, I find it very genuine, too. It's not, uh, to be honest, with something like... you very genuine. Oh, uh, well, you know, it's, it's because I mean it. It's because I care. That's what it is about. Uh, but you, with something like this, you could easily expect it to go into what's known as a flame war or what, uh, where the comments just become inane. Uh, if you look at the comments of a lot of very popular social sites, they just get ignorant or racist or just extreme hyperbolic. The, the people that use Soul Pancake regularly, and it's not a ton of them, but however, you know, 20,000 people that kind of like congregate there, um, they are very protective of the site and they really don't like trolling and they really don't like assholes uh, just, you know, posting stuff and they'll, they'll kick them out, you know, they'll flag them and, and get rid of them. They're very, they really want it to be you know, a, a special place. You see that a lot in the in the comments, and that's another very successful thing about it. Well, you you, uh, you know, when I signed up for an account, it was fairly non-invasive. There wasn't a lot uh, that you were asking from me, but you also so which you know again made the the cost of entry very low. But uh, do you monitor at all the or do you have a sense of the demographics that that play around on this site? Do you have a sense of who your audience is? Oh, we track every care? user. Um, <laughs> We we know everything. They we know their buying habits. Um, we know how often they defecate. Um, their regularity. You know. You follow their Twitter feed is what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Boom. I'm doing um, I'm doing Twitter tomorrow. Any messages you want me to pass on to the folks over at Twitter? Get get a life. What? Anything? Your site will be obsolete in three years. <laughs> and ours won't. <laughs> uh, anything? Um, um, no. What, what was the question? I don't know. Well, do you, I mean, do you monitor the, the demographics, the profiles, types of people, where they're coming from? No, no. We, we haven't. We, we may. We're trying to get some funding, so that's going to require us to figure out kind of the ages and demographics of who's using the site regularly and stuff like that. So, but we haven't to this point, no. 
Well, there's not any advertising on the site now, is there? There's not. So no. would it? I mean, would you ever consider this a profit venture, profitable venture? I thought it was more of a nonprofit. It, it is not. It is a. It is a for-profit venture with a nonprofit heart. And, uh, <laughs> the best of intentions. But we haven't figured out how to make any money off of it yet. That's fair. But uh, the book is doing well. The book was in the New York Times bestseller list for the last six weeks. So that's been pretty cool. And uh, yeah, yeah. New York Times best-selling author. What? Um, who are those people on that TV screen having a conference room meeting? Who are those people? It's, it's a bit magical. We have literally people all around the world. Wait, now they're waving at me. How are you hearing? <laughs> but they're talking to each other like they're having a meeting. Who are those people? They're definitely talking about you. That's, that's for sure. They're actually in San Francisco. So we have video conferencing abilities to bring in. Why don't they come out here? Why are they in San Francisco? Oh, uh, well, you know, it's a packed house. We wouldn't want to uh, make this a little bit too crowded. It's already getting warm in here. That would only add to it, really. How you doing? You in the striped shirt. What's your name? <laughs> They're good people. I'm serious. They're good people. Okay. Yeah. They're good people? You can trust them. I don't like them. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in, in any case, the, uh, the the book is doing well. The book is doing well. It's the book is doing well. So we made a little a little coin off the book. Now we're doing these Oprah web webisodes, which someday we hope to turn uh, Soul Pancake into a little bit more of a of a TV format as well. So it can be books. You know, we've even talked about like a Soul Pancake, uh, you know, music label um, supporting uh, artists that just share our vision. And that doesn't mean like you know, wimpy, you know, I'm not talking about Sarah McLaughlin kind of music. I mean, you know, to me, like, um... Nothing against Miss McLaughlin. I'm is she here? Great. What? <laughs> <laughs> she kicked my ass. Um, but nothing, you know, because to me, like, when I, you know, um, the most spiritually and philosophically, like, uplifting music in my mind is Radiohead you know, or Sigur Rós, you know what I mean? Like, there's people that can be making music about, and that's what I think is so interesting about the arts is that, I was just talking, this is way off topic, but I'm going to say something interesting. Um, <laughs> write this down. Um, um, where are you going? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> what did she say? All right, get out of here. Go on. <laughs> this is a stupid scarf. <laughs> I am the Don Rickles of um, authors. The, um, what was I saying? Oh. There's an interesting uh, theater game that I used to play back in theater school and doing improv and stuff like that. And it was uh, where you would, uh, it's a fascinating thing. You guys should do it when you're doing like your group mime classes down in the courtyard or whatever you do here. Um, you, 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 every, everyone writes down an emotion, and you stick the emotion in, the, in a hat. And then every group of like three or four people picks an emotion out of the hat. And then that's the emotion that they need to try and make the audience feel. So you come up with a scene to make the audience feel that emotion. And it's really interesting, because if, if it's like anger, it's like, how do you do a scene in front of people to make them feel angry? Like, you do an angry scene, you might get laughs. And it might actually be really entertaining. Because um, at the end, you say, so what did you guys feel? What did you actually feel? Not what, do you, what did you think you were supposed to feel, but what did you actually feel? And it's, and it's fascinating. Because um, like the anger one, like there was a famous scene that was done when I was in school where people pretended to be like these sweet little old ladies who started using the N-word all the time. And it was just like, and it was, I mean, people were just outraged. And it, but it really worked. It really made them feel anger, but it's, it's interesting how, how, that, how that works. Um, and you can also make people feel angry by boring them. So just doing like a really bad scene <laughs> could really make um, people feel angry. But it's, but it's interesting because we talk about like, what is art that inspires or what is art that uplifts, um, that um, makes you feel connected, that it feels like soul enriching? Because a lot of times for me, that's, stuff that um, the artist, that was not their intention, you know. Um, it's not what they set out to do. You know, Radiohead sets out to write these, like, weird, jarring soundscapes that all are about human alienation. But nothing makes me feel more like 
uh, euphoric and connected and loving and you know just and transported and transcendent than their music. You know what I mean? Like it's so it's an it's an odd thing. So that's just a little interesting thing. Wasn't that interesting? Okay. <laughs> um, you know, something that, so especially since you mentioned you're going to Twitter, you have a very large Twitter following, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think there are aspects of the comments on your site that remind me of Twitter, a uh, little bit, tidbits of information, especially the banter back and forth. But in the, in an age where uh, I, I think a lot of the communication online is very brief and, and oftentimes um, without a lot of justification, do you really feel like you're able to make significant progress on any of these questions without long form answers or more of an academic uh, uh, approach to, to answering these questions? Yeah, no, no. I mean, I think it's, um, I don't think we ever really will. I think that ultimately, you know, what Soul Pancake, like I said, an aim to be, you know, this is a brand and there's gonna be a number of different platforms from it. And um, I think ultimately, you know, what we're starting to see now, which is really cool, are Soul Pancake meetups. Because I think that talk is cheap and anyone can get on a message board and say, well, I think this, that, and the other thing. I think the harder thing is, uh, and the most important thing is putting it into practice in your life. So, um, you know, this is, this is what I believe, this is what, this is what I stand for. And, um, in getting people together in rooms, there have been people, you know, springing up all over the country, like soul pancake breakfasts and stuff like that, where they use the book as a tool and talk about life's big questions and do some of these challenges together and and take it out in the real world. So we're just trying to figure out new and interesting ways to do that. So that's where our that's where we're headed. Well, we're going to start taking questions since we've got about 20, 25 minutes left. Please feel free to awesome. line up. Uh, the people in the aisle might want to make a little bit of room for those who are kind of line up and take questions. Um, you know, the, uh, there are some of the questions on these books are, are, are very interesting. Some of the questions aside are, are very interesting. I actually saw a user post a question, though, that, that said, you know, why don't we hear anything from the authors? And, and uh, you know, I had to go to Wikipedia to look up your religious beliefs or something like that. Are there any of these questions that you'd like to present some sort of philosophy on? I mean, there are, th there are questions on there about, um, you know, regrets and uh, you know guilt over taking taking uh, chances rather than regrets over not. Uh, there are questions on faith versus, versus uh, reason. Um, mm -hmm. Any question that you'd like to particularly share your philosophy on? Well, but this line. is the great thing, I think, is like no one, no one cares. Look, I'm a weird looking comic character actor from a TV show. <laughs> no one cares what I think. With it's a microphone, not, though. With an awesome microphone. <laughs> and um, but, but really, no one cares what I think, and I think that's important. Uh, that's the last thing I want to be doing is pontificating or saying, here's what I believe. I think that's what celebrities do way too often, and it's just like, shut up, man. Um, so this is a place, you know, this is a place for, this isn't what I believe. What I believe is that we're human beings, and we all have a lot of the same thoughts and feelings and emotions. And when we experience death in our families, or illness, or or trouble, or or, or beauty, like we share things, our neurons fire in the same ways. And there's a there's a collective transcendent consciousness to that. And and let's let's explore that realm. It's a little bit underexplored. That's what I believe, and that's what Soul Pancakes about. So my specific beliefs about my faith or regrets or, or this or that, like, I, I don't know. I don't think anyone really cares. I mean, if you care, you can ask, you can ask me what I think about something, but... I'll ask after the talk. It'll be... You're very loyal wearing a Google t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your only clean t-shirt or what? <laughs> yeah. That's not true. <laughs> um, that's cool. Oh, man. Um, here's a brave soul. Hello. Hi, uh, okay. First of all, thank you so much for coming, appreciate it. So obviously uh, everybody knows you from being on TV and acting and doing all those types of things. And so my question is, do you ever find that there's space to have these types of conversations with the people that you work with in that setting? Or is it all so busy and so preoccupied with getting the product up? Um. So you're really talking about the set of the office or just kind of in show business in general? Um, we could say the set of the office, just to yeah. clarify. You know, we, sure, you know, we have a really great, uh, loving family on the office. We're really lucky. Um, I'm going to burp. <laughs> um, 
Um, and uh, we um, we talk about a lot of things and, you know, share a lot of things. And um, it's, uh, it's really open to that, you know. Um, and uh, people come to the Soul Pancake um, site and the book signing and, and stuff like that and are really interested in it. And um, But we're a really unique situation in that way. You know, we've been together and, you know, had our ups and downs and stuff and been working together for seven years now. So, um, but, uh, you know, we'll get together in Carell's trailer and say, you know, what would you cut your pinky toe off for? You know, some of these <laughs> challenges. Not really, but you know what I mean. Thank you. Okay. Well, actually, that's... Uh, so, you know, your your character on The Office, uh, Dwight Schrute, uh, is actually at times fiercely ethical or fiercely philosophical at the very least, almost to the point of sociopathic, where he just doesn't care what the ramifications of his beliefs are. He just believes them. And other times he's, you know, at times he's, he's devoted and loyal and ethical, and other times malicious and... and a little bit evil. <laughs> does this character? Uh, I mean, does this character come from somewhere? Do you do you feel like there's a reflection of the way that you approach problems? That the way that uh, that you kind of trans you push out to your character. I'm not calling you a bad person. I think you're great. Um, no, that's interesting. Yeah, Dwight has a very specific uh, philosophy that is uh, sometimes really warped and sometimes really right on, um, and it's a subject of his own like little weird petri dish of his, you know, his strange Amish family, uh, clannish um, Nazi uh, family, um, and his survival of the fittest, you know, Darwinist theories. Um, but uh, he is definitely a person of, of principles. They're just really kind of messed up principles. Yeah. Yes. I wanted to present a gift for your trip to Twitter tomorrow. Thank you. A gift to, to my trip to Twitter. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that is the uh, Gmail bow tie, if you, couldn't, if you didn't recognize that one right off the bat. And I will wear this tomorrow at Twitter. <laughs> yeah. My son is down there <laughs> cackling like a, like a weird little demon. And he's, um, he's six years old, and too. he can't stand that I'm the center of attention right now. He's a very, it's a very competitive thing. Um, he's a little natural performer. Um, you can probably get him one, too. <laughs> <laughs> he just did a pratfall. Um, very good. Thank you so much for that T-shirt. For that, for that yes. Yes. Sorry, I don't have a gift, but I do have a question. Yeah. Um, so you said uh, earlier in your talk that you know we have all these areas of our life that are fragmented: family, work, um, you know, friends. Yet we here, um, you know, in our professional life, it's really important to separate. If you want to be most professional, separate work and your personal life. Um, it sounds to me like what you're saying is that the best way to live is to kind of meld all of these things together. Um, and if that's not the case, could you could you clarify or tell us how you think we could remedy having all these fragmented bits of our life um, other than, you know, what you've talked about, just coming together and talking about important questions? Are there other things we can do to kind of, you know, unify our existence, for lack of better words? Yeah, um, that's an excellent question and, uh, and, and very specific. I appreciate it. I think that um, what I'm talking about is not necessarily melding them and bringing them all together, um, uh, but uh, viewing them all as a whole. You know, I think that, you know, just earlier this morning, it was interesting, we took my son over to park over here, Shoreline Park, to play around on a playground, and there was this dad there um, with a Bible, and he was reading the Bible, and he had two kids there, and... And uh, I'm not meaning to mock uh, on anyone who reads the Bible or, or, or Christians at all, at all, because I, I really love the Bible and I respect it greatly. But I, he was reading the Bible and his kids were running around and one kid had his shoes off and was running around in the dew grass and his feet were like all muddy and weird and, and he didn't even notice. And sometimes the kids would come over and they'd want to talk to him, but he would like shrug them off and he was just like reading his Bible and it was like, wait a minute. Dad, you're missing the spiritual moment. The spirituality is with your kids in the, mo in the sunshine, 
you know, experiencing life and taking in each breath and seeing them grow and socialize and, you know, if you're, if you're looking for something, uh, to, you know, to, you, you know, what would Jesus do? Jesus would play with the kids. You know what I mean? Like, so it's, in a way, that's what I'm talking about. It's like a, it's a fragmentation where things are viewed as very, as viewed as very separate, but it's all one expression of what it is to be human. And people talk about, I think, spirituality and religion get a really bad rap in this day and age. And I think, and, and really what we've done is just thrown the baby out with the bathwater. It's like, well, religions are stupid and people kill each other in their name and it's a stupid superstition, so we throw it out and it doesn't exist. Ugh. You know what I mean? It's like, well, wait a minute. There's, there is something to, you know, it, there's, it's interesting that most Americans describe themselves as spiritual but not religious. But spirituality is very important to Americans. So what I'm talking about is that spirituality is your, is your work, your occupation, and being of service and providing the tools that Google provides for the world community. I mean, it's, it's free. You get to use a search engine, and you have this great email and do all this really cool stuff, including the Wave and Chrome that no one ever uses. Um, <laughs> you know, um, that you get to you do all this stuff for free, and it's a great service, and, and that your occupation is is the same as worship, and your family and being of service to them is the same as worship, and your friends and fostering friendships and bringing people together is worship, and being in the park with your kids is, is worship. It's all a human expression. So rather of th- than thinking of, rather than thinking of it in these compartments, this is what I do for this, this, that, and the other thing, that it's all one kind of greater, transcendent, uh, social, human need and you don't and you don't even have to believe in god to to think that you know what i mean so that that's i don't know if that clarified it but that's my thoughts it does thanks okay right hi um so earlier you mentioned i want to say that new york there were like three microphones. They had lines of people up at each microphone. And they were like, I have this, what about this? What about this? And they were like grilling me. I don't know. I may have to take back my thoughts on New York versus Cupertino, wherever we are. <laughs> I don't know. Alta Vista. <laughs> ask Jeeves. Um, I'm going to ask Jeeves whatever happened to ask Jeeves. <laughs> I'm trying internet jokes out. It's not working very well. Yeah, go ahead. What's your question? Um, so earlier you mentioned your sort of bohemian, everything's interconnected upbringing, and I was wondering if you had carried that forward with your son, and if so, how you find these deeper conversations to go with someone so young. Yes, well, that's an excellent question. Um, uh, for my wife and I, and she's sitting right over here, the beautiful Holly Reinhorn. Um, we um, we believe very strongly in um, the, the um, I'll call it the spiritual education of our son, and that doesn't mean like indoctrination into like a certain way of thinking or you know rote memorization or something like that. But we do classes with local parents that are virtues based. It's virtues based education, mm-hmm. so that you learn. So the child learns about compassion, humility, honesty, um, uh, all of these kinds of uh, uh, virtues, qualities. Um, and that's just as much an important part of his education as uh, arithmetic and, and stuff like that. Um, we also believe in, you know, an emotional education about, like, really, like, we did ever since he was really young. Like, you know, if he'd throw a tantrum or something like that, we'd be like, oh, you're fe- what are you feeling right now? Oh, you're feeling disappointment oh, what's that like to feel disappointment? And he'd be like, I feel disappointed. (laughs) And it's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I know what that's like. I feel that too. But I think that emotional and virtues-based spiritual education is something very missing in our schools. And I do think that's ultimately the responsibility of parents or their faith community or whatever community you kind of call together of of like-minded people. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so you make your living as a comedian. Yeah. Uh, do you have a philosophy on, on comedy? Or do you just go out there and do what you think's funny? Um, do I have a philosophy in comedy? I, 
I um, I have a number of things. I mean, it's it's hard to you know sum it up. I mean, it's been like you know I was acting a long time before I did any TV or film. I did ten years of theater in New York, um, and did a lot of you know I did clowning and improv and you know physical theater and just you know Shakespeare clowns and you know so exploring comedy from a number of different uh, things. But I would say that. You know, the most important thing that I think of as comedy that I think Dwight aligns with is that the actor can never think that it's funny. Like, I hate comedy movies where you can tell that the actors think it's hysterical what they're doing. And so you don't just, like Will Ferrell? <clears throat> no, I mean, I... <laughs> that's, that's a tricky one. I don't like Anchorman, but there's other Will Ferrell movies that I love. I love Talladega, and I just saw the other guys, and I thought they were great. And I and I think that because I think that there's stories there and characters there and even when they just go and riff into improv stuff, I do think that um, you know they're able to kind of to, to 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 keep it on story and keep it on character and stuff like that. So I, I mostly believe like you know I'm not really a comedian like I don't do stand up stuff, but I I, um, I believe in like really great characters with really high stakes. Um, pursuing what they want and having no idea how ridiculous they look. Um, and I think that's the origin of most great comedy. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Go away. <laughs> All right. Hi. Hi. So your earlier answer about integrating all the different parts of your life, mm -hmm. um, you know, made me think about some of the things that prevent people from doing that is just the general pettiness and fleshiness and monkiness of being human. Ah. I think Dwight sort of expresses that, like mm -hmm. the, the philosophy and the principles that he abides by, but also how petty he is. Uh -huh. And it, um, it made me think of this quote from The Adventures of Baron Munchausen where he goes, you know, I'm busy running the universe. I don't have time for orgasms and flatulence. So I'm just wondering <laughs> how you, how do you integrate these parts of your life along with the pettiness of, of humanity or just being human? How do I do it? Yeah, how do you do it? What? Really? Do you really care how I do it? Well, we're here I think we should ask this you. guy how he does it. I mean, it doesn't. I will say that it doesn't really matter. Thank you for the question. I mean, it'd be disrespectful. I um, it I um, how do I do it? Uh, I have a set of uh, spiritual beliefs, um, and uh, philosophical beliefs that um, I try and set my sail toward, um, and that um, uh, uh, enrich my soul, and I try and make all aspects of my life kind of a soul, heart-centered, soul-enriching parts of my life. Um, I don't view my work as playing Dwight as any different than being, uh, than worshiping or being devo devotional. Um, I think it's a service that I do. Uh, I have the ability to look weird and make people laugh in a weird haircut, and... Um, so, but it's hard, you know, it's hard to integrate the stuff and it's hard to, to bring people together. So I, you know, I struggle with it and, and fail a lot. You can ask my wife daily, you know, but, uh, you know, I, you know, that's what I try and do. What, what do you try and, what do you try and do? Uh, meditate. I, I try to do the same thing, but I definitely find that I fail more often than I succeed. Yeah, well, me uh, too. Totally. And meditation is something that I try and do every day, but it's, uh, I, it's something I really, I really love and it's, it's, um. Uh, it's really cool, and I kind of need it for the way my mind works. So, thanks. Can I introduce the other authors in my book? They're all up here, Devin and Golries and Shabnam. Will you come up, come up and wave hello to everyone? <laughs> where'd the guy, where'd the guy in the striped shirt go? I think you scared him away. Where'd he go? Tell him to get back in there. I'm serious. I'm going to kick his ass. I'm going into Twitter tomorrow in San Francisco, not out here in the, in the burbs. I'm going to, I want his name. Anyways, come up here, you guys. Just say hi. What? Hi. These are my co-authors. They're awesome. They help run the site and the company, and they just shot these webisodes, and they're awesome. And uh, I just wanted to please shower them with loving applause right now. All right. All right. Now, now, now I'd like you to shower them with urine. 
No, sit down. You guys want to sit down? Sit down. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks. Do you guys want have anything to say at this point? You have any thoughts? You have any questions for the Google people? We need help with our website. <laughs> All of you. You know, if you have any ideas or anything, if you guys see the website, I know there's like some of the brightest minds in the whole world in here. So if you have any ideas, send it to we have good ideas from Google at soulpancake.com. I'm going to make that address right now. <laughs> and yeah, I'll make it right now. Well, five minutes from now. We, we, have, good ideas. we have good ideas at Google. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> There's too many ats in there. Yeah, Google Ideas at soulpancake.com. Google Ideas. all send us that. So you guys are like the most brilliant uh, collective of brains, you know, outside of Facebook. And uh, <laughs> that, no, outside of just, you know, a few, you know, Facebook and Yahoo and Twitter and, you know, a few of these places. Um, uh, we're just a small startup, so we're working on it. We're <laughs> and that's pretty good, you know, fourth or fifth best. Um, so, um, Microsoft, what the, um, so Google ideas, if you have ideas, if you look at the website and if you have, um, you know, um, if you have an unemployed developer friend that we, cause we'll hire, we'll pay like not very much, but, um, or if you have ideas how to make the site better and stuff like that, Google ideas at soulpancake.com. Yeah. I like it. Okay, right. good. Thanks. And your resident hippie is here. Yes. <laughs> I thought I was a resident hippie. What did, what did you say about haircuts a second ago? Uh, <laughs> so thank you for coming, though. Uh, I think a frequent criticism of younger people these days is that we're uh, self-absorbed and fundamentally unserious and don't have the attention spans for anything longer than, say, a YouTube video or 140 characters. And so as an artist encouraging people to make art, um, like, do you think we're past the days where a symphony can cause a riot? Or, like, to what extent do you think art still has consequences? That's an awesome question. <laughs> You're smart. <laughs> what do you work on? You work on maps? Facebook. Facebook? <laughs> um, that's a good question. You got... Devin, you're smart, too. Do you want... You talk. Okay, take this one. Take it. You take it. Well, look at what happened in Denmark with the comic illustrations of Mohammed. I mean, that that was serious consequences of art. I think that, of course, art has has consequences. It just comes in different formats now. I mean, you can look online and see videos that move you more than you know the Mona Lisa did a hundred years ago. But it's just taken a different format. I think it still does. Um, that's a very good point. I think that. Um, the reason there were riots in the theaters when Ubu Hua was performed, you know, back in the turn of the century in, in Paris, and um, is uh, their society had so many constraints and arts were always butting up against those. And ever since you had the, uh, what is it, the cup girls, the three girls in the cup kind of thing? <laughs> no, ever since that, you can't do anything worse than that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> humanity reached its low point. We had literally, like... Everything had become like totally like it. It was just the worst. Um, I see a bunch of people like, "What's he talking about?" It's like, "Oh, don't, do not, do not, Yahoo search that." Okay, <laughs> don't, don't. Um, but that's an interesting thing. I think that everything is. You can't really. Uh, Shabna makes an excellent point. There are certain sectors of the world, I think, that still can be, um, that has great ramifications. But in this day and age, everyone has seen everything, and it's all so fractured and dispersed. I think that when the systems continue to break down, our political system is breaking down more every election cycle. Um, I think when our economic system is breaking down, environmental systems are breaking down, flocks of birds are falling from the sky. Um, you know, all of these systems are going to break down. People are going to start going like, holy shit, you know, the whole thing is starting to unravel. Holy shit, what the fuck do we do? And they will try and pull together in communities and be like, we, we've got to make the world a better place and we've got to take it on ourselves. You know, Obama's not going to do it or John Boner, or, you know, whoever is not going to... 
they're not going to do it for us, you know. The United Nations isn't, so we have to do this ourselves. So I think art will be an expression of that. So the power of art, I think, is to ultimately in the future to, to bring people together, to unite, and, and to bring a cause and, and, and a mission and a movement. Um, so it's a good question. I don't know. That's a long discussion. You should post that on Soul Pancake. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so you talk about how, you know, we have trouble talking to each other about deeper questions. And I think your uh, website is really interesting in a way because I feel like with the onslaught of social media, Twitter, Facebook, iPods, everything, I feel like in a way we're a lot more disconnected. Like you go sit next to someone on public transportation, they've got their iPod on and this like, fuck you, look, don't talk to me. And yeah. how do you think that affects, do you think that affects how we we deal with each other and why maybe we're not talking about these things? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, uh, communities of people used to go um, to dances, you know, square dances, and then they used to go bowling, and now they play Call of Duty, um, you know, in their own world. So I think that, I do think that it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue that humanity will have to face because um, we're social beings, and being social is a need of ours. And um, it's kind of uh, drifting away. I'm losing the audience rapidly. Bye, everybody. As we approach the end of the hour, we actually uh, we have time for one more question. Oh. We'll have to wrap this. Oh, Did I answer? I didn't answer that. Well, is that clear? What am I thinking? Yeah, it's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. We're going to need to bring people together and, and uh, be social beings again. And, uh, and I have that problem, too. I'm always checking my, my phone and my emails, and I play Call of Duty, too, so... You know, it's it's balancing, it's balancing it. Thanks. All right. I don't know if my question's worthy of being the last one, but um, this is an actor. Get out of here, you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. This is an actor question. Um, mm -hmm. So since actors portray different types of characters, um, depending on what their role is. Do you think that actors are in some way more in touch with the human experience to be able to bring themselves to those different types of characters? And if so, how do you think they gain that ability? Is it something that's natural? Is it something that can be learned or developed upon? Um, that's a good question. Um, uh, I think that acting, um, I don't think that actors are, are smarter or uh, more in touch or or anything like that. I really don't. I mean, it's it's just a weird, it's a weird thing. It's definitely a skill that can be learned. Like when I started, I was not a very good actor and I had to, and I think I'm a pretty good actor now, but I had to work really hard at it. I had to go to three years of grad school and do, you know, be spear carrier and Shakespeare plays and, you know, uh, uh, you know, you know, I had to really work at it to kind of get, gain my confidence and figure out what I was doing. But, um, you know, I've worked with, like, kid actors that have, like, never taken a lesson, and they just do they just do it, and they're, like, incredibly facile and brilliant at what they do. And um, I, it's, a, it's, a weird, it's a weird mystery. I mean, why do some kids, you know, pick up the guitar at age nine, and then all of a sudden they're just, like, writing albums on their, you know, on their, what's it called? Band camp? The thing on that? Garage band and they're composing symphonies, you know. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's so it's one of the mysteries of the of the arts. So, wish I had a better answer. Thank Any you. thoughts on that, you guys? Oh. And I, I think that's all the time we have. So I'm sorry, my man. But uh, uh, <laughs> um, we might you have see him later. Give him a hug. Yeah. Well, well, we do have a table back there. So please make sure you pick up a book. And uh, again, Soul Pancake, the book. Buy it. Soulpancake.com. Visit it. Rain Wilson, co-op. Thank you, Google. Thanks for having me.